Right from his first day in office at the Lagos State Secretariat, Alausa, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola, left no one in doubt that he is a man in a hurry, determined to deliver on his electoral promises. The Governor insists that time is of the very essence and that every minute counts. When I woke up this morning, I repeated a practice that has become a regular habit for me since assumption of office on May 29th this year. It is a habit that I recommend to every member of this government. I check the calendar to calculate exactly how many hours we have spent in office since we were sworn in 200 hours. This is why the place of governance in the center of excellence since Governor Fashola's assumption in office 300 days ago has been feverish and shows no sign of letting up. The governor has adopted a no-nonsense style, demanding maximum productivity from public officers and setting exacting standards of excellence for others to emulate. Not only has the administration the aggressive implementation of projects and programs inherited from its predecessor, it has introduced creative innovations in diverse sectors including the environment, housing, security, job creation and poverty alleviation. Between the 22nd of August and 23rd of November 2007, the Governor and the entire State Executive Council undertook an intensive tour of the 57 local government areas and local council development areas in the state. The first-hand observation and assessment of the needs of the people of the grassroots substantially informed the determination of priorities in the year 2008 408 billion naira landmark greatly budget of the state. Indeed, Governor Fashola, while formally presenting the budget to the House of Assembly, left no one in doubt about his determination to continue the pace of innovations and steady progress in the state, as well as improve on the intensity and scope of delivering democracy dividends to the people. The Fashola administration has concentrated tremendous energy and resources on the massive rehabilitation, modernization and construction of roads throughout the state. Over 100 major and strategic routes have been advanced for rehabilitation and reconstruction over the next three and a half years. These include 33 major roads and six pedestrian bridges in Yaba, Ido Axis of Lagos, 11 major roads in Apapa Central Business District, 13 major roads in Alimosho, 15 major roads in Suruleri. 19 in Ajeromi Felodun and another set of 52 roads cutting across all local government areas. Work has commenced on the first phase of these roads construction and projects as provided for in the 2008 budget. Indeed, given the sheer number of sites on which road construction is ongoing at the same time, Lagos has been described as one vast construction city. This is one of the most massive inner city road rehabilitation projects. The Bodilon, Alexandra, Gerald and Osborne roads. As their names indicate, they constitute the initial roads constructed by the British when they held the reign of governance in the nation. For decades, the roads, just like many in this vicinity, remained narrow, a typical British characteristic another time became quite inadequate and in consideration of the upsurge in population and economic activities even here in the highbrow equally they needed to be upgraded and the rehabilitation has started in earnest by march 2008 about 20 percent of progress has been achieved the pace of work the quality the technical expertise being used are reflections of the seriousness and commitment of the administration. Within this axis, work is progressing steadily towards the completion of Ademola Tukumo Street 
and other road arteries within Victoria Island. To enhance the commercial viability of the city of Lagos and the islands surrounding it, the administration has intensified efforts and by March 2008, over 75% of the job has been completed. Here is another effort in the enhancement of the physical situation of the Lagos Island. The sand filling of an area to serve as market and major bus terminal. We are now looking at the transformation that has just taken place at the Funshaw Williams Avenue, Surulere. Though here to be rehabilitated, even halfway, the road has started to wear a new look. Here is another manifestation of a total commitment to transformation. This massive improvement from Yaba via Herbert Macaulay through Aje Street, Montgomery, Commercial Avenue and Old Yaba. This is the first phase of the massive rehabilitation and reconstruction of 33 major roads planned for the Yaba Ido axis. Another ongoing road construction and upgrading is the dualization and improvement of Isherelofi Iba Ojo, which is almost completed. Already, the road has started to improve not only movement but the economy, particularly in the estate business. Yet another outside the Lagos metropolis. This is the major wayfare into the historical Badagri town, the Joseph Dosu Street, now being completely rehabilitated to cater for the vehicular activities in and outside Badagri. The administration has awarded the design contract for the transformation of the Lagos Badagri Expressway into a 10-lane international highway complete with pedestrian walkway, bus rapid transit and light rail routes. As he has been doing, uh, we discover he's an action man, whatever he says, he's doing. I, I am very, very well impressed about the performance of uh, Governor Fashola. Uh, I can say, say, say it broadly that uh, he has done very, very well. For example, in my area, uh, I talk about uh, Aguda area. He has just start, they have just started, uh, they have already done the construction of our road at Adu Street. It's a road that has been there for the past 25 years. He has performed very well, even beyond the expectation of um, our people. But in this case, um, the activities have been going on well. Uh, so the, um, that has been going on very well, and we do appreciate his efforts. Um, he didn't sit down in the office uh, dictating uh, this and that. He came out to see things. For us in Badagri in particular, uh, it has been precious for him because the major road, uh, Joseph Dosuwe, which was a battle, Kevin, has been taken up by the governor and uh, the construction has, has begun. Um, we are very grateful to him because that road was uh, supposed to be a federal road. But uh, when he saw the suffering of the people, he said, I oh, know this must be done. At the southwest of the state is the Ajabadori Road. Since the Lekki Peninsula axis began to swell in population, coupled with the sandy terrain, this road had been grossly overstretched. The traffic holdups here used to be quite biting. Within a year into the tenure of Governor Baba Tunde Fashola, the reconstruction of this road, a project commenced by the Ashwajo Tinumbu's administration, is almost completed and the traffic situation has improved considerably. The way the legal state does not uh, please and uh, I believe I'm very happy. We all the community in Badalus we are very happy with the legal state does not. The dynamism and sense of purpose of this administration was vividly demonstrated 
by prompt reaction to the distress covered at Ajegule village, Ikorodu. On the 8th of September 2007, a section of this covert almost caved in. It caused serious traffic problem. By Thursday, 27th of December 2007, it has been completely rehabilitated before the expiration of three months promised to effect the repair. Also being constructed within the time frame are Okota Itere overhead link bridge and road works and the pedestrian bridge at Soya bus stop and Papa Should Expressway. I like and wait and do that bridge for us because that place is a very dangerous place. Any time I accident, accident because we do that bridge there. Anybody where they climb, they pass, so we like and wait and go and wait and do bridge for us. We like. Undoubtedly, this is a sector that has posed the greatest challenge to Governor Baba Tunde Fashola, a mega city of 18 million people that continues to attract a massive daily influx of people from within and outside Nigeria seeking to tap its bounteous economic opportunities must necessarily confront the challenge of effectively securing lives and property within its territory. Lagos is the most urbanized area of the country. She is the nation's industrial center and West Africa's commercial hub. She is the preferred destination for millions of people, particularly youths, fleeing the pervasive poverty caused by Nigeria's protracted economic recession. The rate of migration to Lagos from all over the country outstrips the rate at which new job opportunities can be created. Lagos State is thus saddled with a large army of unemployed youths most of whom are non-Lagosians who are vulnerable to being recruited into criminal gangs. Barely two weeks in office, the governor moved decisively to contain the scourge of crime, raised a 31-member security committee headed by the country's former Inspector General of Police, Alhaji Muslim Smith, to come up with recommendations for enhancing security of lives and property. This initiative resulted in the enactment of the Lagos State House Assembly of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund Bill and the subsequent establishment of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. This is clearly one of the most significant achievements by any government at any level in this political dispensation. It has created the framework for the private sector to complement government's effort in funding the security challenges of the state on a sustainable basis. In a remarkable demonstration of support for the initiative and expression of confidence in the administration, the corporate organizations have so far donated over 1 billion naira in cash and kind to the fund. The initiative also restructured the RRS on senatorial basis with 211 new points established for effective and efficient patrol and monitoring. Through the Security Trust Fund, 250 new vehicles have been procured to enhance the mobility and effectiveness of police and the RRS. Modern and effective bulletproof vests, besides the new sets of uniforms and complete battle ready kits, were provided to the members of the two arms high-tech communication gadgets to facilitate communication and movement were also provided. To boost the morale of officers and men of the RRS, new duty allowance have been approved for them. To demonstrate the sense of purpose and sincere intention of the administration, the widow of late Inspector Johnson of RRS and Sergeant Elisha Mbamia of Mopo 20 and others were given one million naira each when these men died in the course of duty recently. Today, the brightly painted vehicles of the RRS are visible throughout the length and breadth of Lagos State, courtesy of the Security Trust Fund. The renewed firepower of the RRS was demonstrated on Friday, the 14th of March 2008, when a major bank robbery was foiled in Dokpemu area of Lagos with the police killing four of the robbers and arresting two. To complement the efforts of the Nigeria police 
as well as that of the RRS, the administration has intensified and reinforced the Lagos State Environmental and Special Offenses Enforcement Unit. The strategy is to fish out all the black spots in the state, frustrate, smoke out and drive out all the nefarious people who molest and harass innocent citizens. As a matter of fact, by the third month in office, the governor had become noted as no-nonsense governor with zero tolerance for molestation and the area boy syndrome. Also, to further strengthen the efforts to combat insecurity and robbery, the administration enforced the ban on motorcyclist or CADA operators in operation after 10 p.m. in every part of the state except Lekki, Victoria Island and Ikoyi where the ban takes effect from 7 p.m. The energy and resources expended on this sector are clear indications that the administration of Abakini Fashola is focusing on preventive health care with all vigor. In view of the devastating effect of malaria in this part of the world, particularly on the children, the fight against the scourge has been stepped up. By March 2008, over 500,000 doses of ACTs have been distributed through public and private health facilities for the management of uncomplicated malaria. In addition to this, 507,000 ITNs were also distributed. Also, to further curtail malaria in the state, steps and measures to really minimize the ailment were itemized and made known to the public through public enlightenment booklets, while copies of the National Anti-Malaria Treatment Guidelines and policy documents were distributed to medical facilities. All these measures have helped to check the menace of deliberating malaria. A total of 35,350 people benefited from the free health mission within the period. To complement the delivery of free health care through the formal public health structures, the administration has sustained the free health mission, a quarterly intervention through which an army of diverse medical specialists collaborate with the government to bring specialized health care services to the doorsteps of the people in different parts of the state. 47 applicants were sponsored for overseas treatment, while over 50 benefited from the medical refund scheme. To further complement the free health scheme, a total of 8,006 people benefited in Lagos Island, Epe, Mojoda, Badagri and Agege under the pre-health mission in collaboration with Eco Club International. At the 7th Eco Free Health Mission for the Lagos East Senatorial District held at Ikurumi General Hospital, a total of 26,468 people benefited. 2,674 were for ophthalmic consultations. In a creative and productive partnership, between the government and voluntary organizations, the Rotary Club Bagada collaborated with the state government to provide free artificial limbs, also known as elbow prosthesis, to 30 handicapped persons. Blindness and partial blindness are now recognized as rising in the nation. In order to effectively rise to this challenge, the administration has restructured and reorientated the blindness prevention program, popularly known as Jigibola, which was introduced by the preceding administration of Ashwaju Bola Akmaitinumbu. The program, which encompasses free eye screening, treatment, surgery, and provision of free medicated glasses, has been decentralized with the local government rather than the senatorial district as a new unit of implementation. The Fashola administration trained over 105 nurses and community health officers as primary eye care workers and equipped to offer basic health services. By March 2008, the 90 primary eye care centers located all over the state have screened over 1,500 people. Still under the Blindness Prevention Program, 
apart from the establishment of seven secondary health care facilities designated as secondary care centers and the procurement of eye equipment of varied and sophisticated dimension. Also, apart from the school screening exercise, where a total of 4,843 children were screened, and over 1,000 special order glasses had been distributed, a total of 402 patients were examined under the free eye surgery expeditions and surgeries were carried out for cataract, glaucoma, epilation and others. Operation Smile This administration has indeed put smiles on the faces of those who have thrown up hands in despair to the unfortunate deformity. By 2008 March, 42 patients had benefited from the corrective surgeries under the cleft lip and palate corrective surgery. Since the administration of Ashwad Bola Metinumbu started the corrective surgery in this category, the list of patients seeking the state government's help has continued to grow. In the 300 days of the administration of Abatunde Fashola, 62 patients had benefited, with 293 patients receiving mobility aids. To further strengthen the capacity of the public health sector to deliver efficient and qualitative health care, the Governor has intensified efforts to complete all the infrastructural projects in the state, especially the ultra-modern health and diagnostic center pediatric and family medical care and ward complex within the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. In addition to the ongoing construction of structures and provision of facilities to transform Lasuth into a first-class medical center of excellence, the administration has awarded the construction of five child and maternal care centers and a world ultra-modern maternity hospital on Lagos Island. For some time now, this has become a common feature in the state, especially in the Lagos metropolis. If only for the loss of valuable lives and property, a responsive government must strive within the confines of the law to ensure strict guidelines on erection and maintenance of buildings in the state. To check this ugly incident, the administration in the state has enhanced the enforcement capacity of the State Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development. In accordance with the zero tolerance stance towards the non-compliance with the rules and regulations guiding the erections of structures in the state, by March 2008, the administration through the State Physical Planning and Development Authority has demolished a total of 490 shanties and temporary structures. Also, 698 structures were sealed, while 312 touched, and 169 partially demolished. Also within the period under review, over 10,900 contravention notices were served. Also served were 6,673 demolition notices and 1,748 quit notices as well as 4,397 stop work order notices. In order to minimize bottlenecks in the process of obtaining building approval, the agency had intensified efforts to ensure that permits for building construction are received within 30 days under the Operation 3030 policy. Also, to further manifest the sincerity of purpose to have better structural development as well as show the commitment of the government to compensate those genuinely displaced, 
The administration had released keys to the two bedroom apartments at Shasha to those displaced at the Uluwali area of Lagos Island under the Lagos Island Central Business District upgrading and improvement. The administration had also acquired 150 hectares of land at Agboa for the relocation of the Okobaba Sawmillers and the First Worker Timber Association. Also completed and commissioned in November 2007 was the rebuilding of Balogun Square into an ultra-modern market. For years, the state had witnessed the ugly trends of street trading and it seemed that nothing could be done by the government to stop this unwholesome feature, especially within the Lagos metropolis. Everywhere became a marketplace which led to disorderliness a daily and stinking environment, traffic bottlenecks, clustered drains and gutters. All these make the city of Lagos to be tagged environmentally unfriendly. Even well before the 300 days in office, virtually all the areas taken for granted as marketplaces have now given way to more environmentally friendly atmosphere. At the Lagos Island, the administration, besides the rebuilding of Balogun Market Square, had constructed key clamp stores at Martina Libalogun Street. All the displaced Uluwali traders now occupy this setup and it has helped to reduce street trading activities within the micro area as well as helped to ease traffic congestion within the central business district. The administration has clamped down heavily on street trading on Carter Bridge, while the office of the CBD administration has been strengthened with patrol vehicles as well as security, environmental and traffic control officers to enforce discipline within the CBD. Also at Aigbeti in Lagos Island, 1,600 key clamps have been provided to accommodate another set of street traders. A peep into similar effort on the environment will reveal another strong conviction to make a meaningful impact. Even just days into the administration's tenure, there was already a clear indication of the new direction being taken. First, the monthly environmental sanitation exercise was restructured are made more participatory beyond mere observation and monitoring to ensure considerable cleaner environment and creation of conscious awareness among the general public. Apart from these efforts, a great deal of energy and resources were concentrated into collection of waste and its disposal. 
and to ensure compliance, the kick against discipline Kai Brigade was empowered and given necessary tools to effect positive attitudinal change. By March 2008, several areas have started to wear a clean and inviting look. Street medians, roundabouts, and the bridges that were once considered an eyesore now appear more friendly and attractive. Besides the fact that the new measures to enforce a cleaner environment have brought considerable sanity to a number of roads, bus stops and other places, there is now smoother movement of vehicular traffic and pedestrian movement in some areas. Also, the measures have helped to eliminate many sources of threat to security of lives and property. Perhaps the most noticeable of the transformation is this, the inner and outer marina. In the past, due to the various activities, all sorts of artisans, street urchins, street traders and layabouts, this CMS bus stop used to be at best one of the roughest spots in Lagos. But now, not any longer. Some of the other beautification and landscaping include Faloma, Leaf Park, the loop near local airport, Ojota Mile 12 Median, Eric Moore Road, Roundabout on Shuba Rubio to Street, GRA Ikeja, and others. The greening of Lagos has become a popular habit as more and more people embrace the beautification culture championed by the administration. Several areas now look friendly and appealing, an indication that with enough commitment and seriousness of purpose, the city of Lagos can indeed be environmentally friendly and inspiring. To complement the efforts on street cleaning and greening of the state, the administration intensified the monitoring of activities of industries in the state through the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. By March 2008, over 10 industries have installed effluent treatment plants, a system to effect clean production of emission into the atmosphere. Also, over 200 companies have had the environmental impact assessment. About 90 industries were visited for compliance status with 60% compliance recorded. The Lagos State Waste Management Authority, the agency responsible for collection and disposal of waste and refuse, was completely restructured to meet up with the demands of prompt service and repositioned to become the central body to manage waste in the state. By this arrangement, the rehabilitation of the three existing dump sites at Olushosun, Solus and Abulegba has commenced. Over 2,000 bins have been provided at different locations to facilitate collection of refuse across the state. Within the period under review, additional trucks, plants and other equipment to enhance effective waste management have been procured. Also, the private sector participation, PSP, in domestic waste collection and disposal has been reorganized for more effectiveness. Determined to ensure proper management of voluminous solid waste, the governor has given considerable support to the Waste to Wealth Plant at Ikorodu. This initiative of the Ashua Jubola Tinumbu is meant to produce 250 bags of organic fertilizer daily. Directly connected with the effort for a better a more friendly environment is the focus on clearing, dredging and maintenance of canals in the state. Under the emergency flood relief program, the administration totally confronted the perennial flood that had used to be devil some areas in Lagos metropolis, making qualitative and affordable education accessible to the youths, irrespective of their socio-economic background, remains 
a cardinal priority of this administration. Again, the administration released 500 million naira for the execution of intervention project called Save Our Soul Project, Phase 5, in 166 public schools. This SOS Schools Rehabilitation Project covered 51 primary schools, 43 junior secondary schools, and 72 secondary schools in the state. The SOS project includes repair of roofs, painting of buildings, improvement of furnishing, provision or repair of toilets, and other minor works to improve the learning environment. To complement rehabilitation of school buildings, the administration approved within the period about 130 million naira for the production of schools furniture the composition of which were 9,062-seater desks and chairs for the pupils, 3,000 teachers' chairs and tables for teachers, and 100 executive furniture for principals. Almost simultaneously, the administration awarded another contract for the supply of furniture to some junior and primary schools under the Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEB. Over 4,950 people's furniture and 198 teachers' furniture will be supplied. To further improve the interest in science learning, the sum of 134 million naira was also released for the supply of modern science equipment to 10 junior secondary schools to upgrade their physics, chemistry and biology laboratories. Also included were the supply of integrated science equipment to eight junior secondary schools. Work is progressing steadily on the provision of at least 3,500 new classrooms in public schools this year as part of the overall plan to build 15,000 new classrooms over the next three and a half years. Besides rehabilitation of school buildings, supply of science and integrated science equipment, and supply of pupils and teachers' furniture, the administration, in its determination to provide a conducive environment for learning and protect the lives of students, demolished structurally defective buildings and approved the construction of three new school buildings with all facilities at Ikotun and Alakwere Ketu. To enhance the capacity of public school teachers to impart knowledge to their students, the administration has embarked on aggressive training and retraining of teachers, and this category of staff are given priority in terms of opportunities for overseas training and workshop. Also to strengthen the workforce in the junior secondary schools in the state, the government employed 167 NCE graduate teachers through the Federal Teacher Scheme. To further improve on the teaching methods, the state government, through SUBEB, in collaboration with COMPASS and USAID, trained 1,600 teachers on improvement of teaching of English language. Additional 1,250 teachers were taught the use of radio interactive aids instruction. Due to the large population, and all within the relative small space of the Lagos metropolis, this sector will continue to pose a great challenge for a long time to come. The Fashola administration has demonstrated, beyond doubt, its resolve to find enduring sustainable solutions to the perennial traffic problems in the state. There can be no better testimony to this than the vigor with which this administration continued, completed, and launched the first phase of the Bose Rapid Transit Scheme, which runs from mile 12 to CMS. Under the scheme, 126 high-capacity buses capable of transporting 100 passengers at a time move every five minutes on a dedicated bus route spanning mile 12 to CMS while commercial vehicles are confined to service lanes. A major feature of the scheme 
is the active involvement of the National Union of Road Transport Workers in the scheme as private sector operators of the buses. The administration has also awarded the construction of new jetties at Ikorodu, Badori and Osborne as part of efforts to enhance transportation and reduce the burden on our roads. The administration has stepped up measures to increase the provision of pavement curbs with reflective paints to ensure safety as well as to enhance the aesthetics. Also being pursued with vigor are the rehabilitation and construction of medium barriers which ensure lane discipline and smooth flow of traffic. Quite a number of these medium barriers and curbs are presently undergoing rehabilitation. In its efforts to find a solution to traffic bottlenecks, traffic signal lights had been installed at Akme Road and Metal Box Road, Ogba, Idimu, Ipaja Road, Ilupeju Bypass, Koka Road, Moshi, and Okota Roundabout, Ago Palace Way, Isolo. The commitment to improve on this traffic management agency has further revealed the determination of this administration to lessen considerably the amount of time the Goshen spend on the roads. Within its first 200 days in office, the administration employed and trained 1,000 new traffic officers to strengthen LASMA. LASMA officials were kitted and now at virtually every major intersection to ensure orderliness and smooth flow of traffic. Six months into Governor Fatula's tenure, the agency was further strengthened with the acquisition of additional facilities including 50 high capacity motorbikes to facilitate movement while another 50 bikes will soon be delivered. In the quest to find a solution to the incessant traffic holdups across the state, it was discovered that the attitude of drivers, especially commercial drivers, constitute a great impediment. To put a check on this, the administration initiated the establishment of Drivers Institute. The institute will standardize the driving profession, recertify drivers, register and accredit private driving schools, and create a database for drivers in the state. In addition, Drivers who currently hold valid driving license will be retrained at the institute whenever the motorist is apprehended by officials of LASMA for violating traffic offense. Also to ensure safety and convenience for commuters, the administration has intensified the construction of laybys along major roads to provide access for buses to pick up and drop off passengers without disturbing the flow of traffic. Also within the period under review, the administration through the Motor Vehicle Administration Agency introduced the production and issuance of motorcycle riders card in the state. Due to a small size and sandy terrain in its coastal areas, the state is not considered agrarian. However, the administration of Vatundi Fashola has taken steps to maximize the agricultural potentials of the state. By September 2007, the governor had given the nod for the procurement of 21 tractors, each with a set of disc plow, disc harrow, disc riggers, and tipping trailer to provide mechanization services to farmers in the state. You can imagine what the situation will be when the tractors begin to render service to the farmers. For years, transportation of beef remained at best just a cake. It seemed that we would never grow out of this unwholesome practice. To reflect the administration's resolve to put a stop to this unhygienic practice, the state government launched the Eco Meat Vans and placed a ban on unwholesome mode of meat transportation. The system affords the public-private participation strategy to come to fore. The butchers' associations in the state have been linked with some commercial banks for the procurement of these vans and easy payment arrangement has been made. When fully operational, the made vans will ensure that the beef being sold in the market are delivered under strict, hygienic and wholesome manner. If Lagos State does not have last space of arable land, what it does have 
in large expanse is this. Stretching 180 kilometers is the ocean. There are also numerous lagoons and creeks. To take advantage of this aquatic resource, the administration has introduced new form of fish production, known as cage and pen culture, to be introduced to the artisan fishermen using the open water bodies. Six fishing communities of Ise, Epe, Idale, Wekodolu, Badore, Otawuri, and Ijede have been selected for the pilot phase in the state. Also, within the period under review, a sum of about 130 million naira have been disbursed to Fadama to implement some projects to aid food production in the state. Some of the projects include 76 agro processing equipment, 135 concrete fish ponds, 200 fishing traps, and others. Also, in order to ensure electricity, at least when available, and to minimize urban migration, the administration through the Ministry of Rural Development procured and distributed 45 transformers to various rural communities in the state. Many artisans like welders, tailors, hairdressers, grinding mill operators and others in these area and riverine communities will now have electricity to work with. Also to improve means of transportation in these communities, a number of roads have been constructed at Lassisi Olukoto Street and Kende on Olaja on Laiwala Street in Gondo. Others are Iboye Road Epe, Irekpo Estate Ikotu, and Interlocking Blocks Road for Ibuefo. Jetties were also constructed at Ibolomi and Agomu communities in Epe and Ojo areas. In spite of the overwhelmingly urban characteristic of the state, a greater percentage of its populace, especially in the rural and riverine areas, are still quite poor. But nevertheless, it is an enterprising populace, and to help these less privileged achieve their dream, the administration has established the Lagos State Microfinance Institution with a seed sum of 250 million naira, which will be steadily increased to 5 billion naira over the next three years through budgetary allocation. The Microfinance Institution provides for easy access to credit by indigent men and women especially artisans at the grassroots, at an interest rate much lower than the prevailing lending rate in the commercial banks. It is a scheme that will have direct effect and impact especially on women at the grassroots who constitute a vital and crucial chain in the development of society as their successful participation will in the long run have a positive effect and also multiply effect on hundreds of families, children, and the society at large. Another landmark achievement of the last 300 days of the Fashola administration was the establishment of the Lagos Mortgage Scheme to enable low and medium income earners in the public and private sector obtain loans to own their homes on a long-term payment arrangement spread over 25 years. When fully operational, the Lagos Mortgage Scheme will stimulate intense activity in the construction and allied sectors of the economy, as well as boost job creation and wealth generation. In compliance with the modern trend of information technology, the administration has given approval for the establishment of e-learning center to be erected at the former Central Library Board Street in Lagos Island. The project, when completed, we provide students of our institutions current, relevant and up-to-date information for their projects. To continue the enhancement of the commercial viability of the state, the administration has intensified efforts to ensure that the Lekki Free Trade Zone is completed well on time. The zone, which will permit 100% foreign ownership of investment and joint ventures, as well as 100% repatriation of capital, profits and dividends out of Nigeria will boost the economy of not only Ibejuleki, where it is situated, but the entire state and the nation. The administration created 4,500 vacation jobs 
for youths in August and September 2007 to compile comprehensive data on the formal and informal tradesman and artisan sector in the state. To further sustain the vacation job culture, the administration also engaged 500 students in August through September to gather data on abandoned vehicles and other objects obstructing traffic on bad roads as well as impeding water flow in drainage channels. After the successful completion and commissioning of the first phase of the Bar Beach project, aimed at putting final solution to the perennial encroachment of the Atlantic and the threats to the multi-billion Naira properties that dotted the Victoria Island axis, Governor Babatunde Rajifashola's administration has commenced the second phase of the project. The construction of additional 500 meters buffer line will lead to further stabilization of the coastline as advanced technology is being utilized towards making the entire Victoria Island, Lekki, Ikoyi and Lagos Island safe, secure and conducive for continuous economic activities. Governor Babatunde Rajifashola himself an ardent sportsman hosted the Victoria's Golden Eaglet to an elaborate reception upon their return to the country after lifting the coveted trophy. The administration's hand was quite visible in the success story of the nation's beach soccer team in Africa and the eventual traveling to South America for the world competition. The present administration of Governor Mbatunde Rajifashola also shouldered the responsibility for the burial of the late coach of the Golden Eaglet, Mr. Yemitela. The administration again did not withhold his hands from lending support to the family he left behind. Realizing the pivotal position of the Obas and Chiefs in governance, the administration reconstituted and enlarged the State Council of Obas and Chiefs from 31 to 51 in a bid to bring governance close to the people at the grassroots level. The inauguration was performed by the governor on January the 8th, 2008. It is indeed hard to imagine that all that were pointed out took place within just 300 days in office. And to showcase this remarkable record, both the Lagos State Television and Radio Services are now empowered to beam to the world through satellite. Both stations can be viewed and heard on internet anywhere in the world. A major feature of governance in Lagos State in the last 300 days is the utilization of every possible opportunity to engage idle hands by creating new jobs, whether it is roads that are being constructed or drains that are being cleaned and constructed or open spaces beautified and greened or schools rehabilitated and constructed, thousands of new jobs are being created and the economy stimulated for greater prosperity. Um, Mashallah is quite wonderful. Being somebody that has legal patterns, he notes, he, 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 he considers human rights, he considers human feelings as uh, one of the presidents. And I think uh, Mashallah is doing a very wonderful work. Just barely here, he's moving towards it. It's, it's a wonderful work. Uh, you are what they describe as a breath of fresh air. So this is a governor that I marked in Because you can actually see what is going on. You can actually see what is going on. And I want to thank you because many people, many people have begun to lose hope about our ability to govern ourselves in this state. Many people have, have come to the level where they said, well, this is how it is going to go, and they were just waiting to do the little they can before they die. But you have lit the flame of hope, and particularly you have given the younger people a reason to wake up and be active again on their own behalf. So I wish you well, Executive Government. I know that if you say you're going to do something, it's because you need to do it. No doubt, the journey ahead is still far greater and larger 
the waters taking place. However, in view of the steady and very progressive steps taken so far, there is every justification to hold that the remaining journey will be taken in greater strides. Governor Babatunde Raji Fashola, determined, purposeful and intelligent, a man of simple virtue, wavering in his convictions to make Lagos State better, cleaner and more progressive, has within just 300 days or 7,200 hours put up measures which have by and large had profound effects on the people of Lagos State. responsibilities of any government